Good morning, friends. I'm here to talk about analytical writing. This is the sweet spot to earning national board certification. Well, reflective writing is too. But right now, I'm really wanting to get you all in this analytical voice, the voice that so many of you struggle with. So let me share a few slides on a PowerPoint to try to get my point across and help you get in this mindset. Analytical thinking and writing. So it's the why. It's the significance. It offers you that avenue to tell why you did what you did, to break it down for the assessor, to let them in your brain, to let them know how you diagnostically plan and follow through in your teaching, and then ultimately what the impact is on your students. That's what we're talking about. Now, if you've been through any of my courses, or really anything I do mostly, you will have gone through my writer's workshop where I taught, I show you these next three slides. And these slides really help you to get a grasp of what analysis looks like in writing. This first slide is just a statement. It really would provide context, but that's it. No evidence or credit, really. It says, the two boys at the round table met the goals associated with this lesson as evident in the video. Yeah, I mean, that happened. You can see it. It's a statement. It's just descriptive. Anybody could say that, right? The next slide, some credit, because what has happened here is the teacher has extended the statement by putting a little bit of evidence with it. So this is kind of like clear evidence. This is where some of you fall in the 2, 2.25 trap. The two boys at the round table met the goals associated with this lesson as evident in the video. One of the boys timed the car during its descent down the ramp, while the other recorded the distance for trial one of the experiment. You can hear the boy with the green shirt saying, trial one proved that we need to make our ramp higher to increase the distance it travels. Oh, that sounds great, right? That is evidence. It is pushed into the statement. So that's that's good. That's good. But there's still the need for analysis. And so some of you are like, oh my gosh, Tracy, though, if I do an example like this and then I add something else to it, how could I fit everything in my paper? This is the point. The point is you don't need 5,000 examples that are just statements. You need several really good ones that have a statement plus evidence plus analysis to be clear, concise, and convincing for full credit. Think about your students who write TDAs, um, text-dependent analysis papers. Those students aren't going to pick every single line of what they're reading, right? They're only going to pick a couple, two to three to four things that they're really going to highlight in their text-dependent analysis. And you need to get in that same vein of thinking. So now we have that same statement plus the evidence, and now we add analysis. Listen to how it changes. The two boys at the round table met the goals associated with this lesson as evident in the video. One of the boys timed the car during its descent down the ramp, while the other recorded the distance for trial one of the experiment. You can hear the boy with the green shirt saying, trial one proved that we need to make our ramp higher to increase the distance it travels. This proves to me that the boys are beginning to understand and describe gravitational and frictional force. As they completed trial two, both boys were able to label the type of force on the car as gravitational while on the ramp and frictional when it's coming to a stop on the floor. Now do you see how she's analyzing it back to the goals? Now she's basically saying this proves to me her thinking is coming aloud, not just what we can physically see in the video. Or in the work sample, because you, you'll you use the same thing no matter whether you're working on C2, C3, C4, you're going to be providing the analysis statement. It's just in C3, you're looking at video. That's your evidence that you are analyzing. In C2 and C4, you're analyzing work samples. Or in some of your cases, in C2, assessment documents. And in C4, assessment documents with the formative data. So um, th this is a great example of all credit. Okay, this is clear, concise, and convincing. One example that the assessor could pluck out of your writing. 
So let's break down analysis. And honestly, if I can help you understand it in any one word, I think that word is insight. Insight. So the assessor just wants insight into your brain. And there's six ways of doing this, okay? Number one, prove. You're proving your ability to be a critical observer and critical thinker toward the goals of the lesson. Remember, we we saw right down here, she was very critical. Look, this proves, she's proving. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm going crazy here. Observe, observe what is seen in the evidence and interpret it. So really the word there should probably be more of interpret, but you first have to observe to interpret. So you are interpreting the evidence. You are not just describing. Notice you did not see the word describe in there. You're seeing the word observe, then interpret. Persuade. Persuade the reader, which in this case is the assessor, that you have met the rubric for the portfolio. So you're persuading them that I know these rubric bullet points. I'm giving you examples toward these rubric bullet points. That's insight for the assessor. They're looking for your insight. Unpack. Analysis means to unpack. When you describe, you're summarizing essentially or giving the context needed. But in analysis, you want to take the things apart. You want to take apart what's happening in the videos in C3 or take apart what's happening in the work samples or assessments in C2 and 4. What is going on with the evidence? They want to hear you talking about that in this analytical voice. Re and then you take those parts that you unpack and you restructure them. So um, restructure those parts for the reader to understand what you now know because of those parts. Like this tells me, this proves to me, this made me aware. That's what insight sounds like and looks like. Those of you that are inside of my programs, again, you've got those analytical and reflective stems that you can see. And you're like, wow, yeah, okay. If I can just get into that voice, that's what I need. Go beyond predictable. Go beyond predictable. Let the assessor hear you thinking and writing um, uh, like you're a doctor, like diagnosing things. Be Go beyond predictable. Don't just be like, this is what's happening. They can already see what's happening or they can visualize it on a document. You're giving insight. That is what's super important. All right, so how can you practice this to get yourself in this mindset of analysis? All right, the way I did it when I was going through the national board process many, many years ago, but I still go through renewal, so I, I keep fresh on this, is I pick an ad. And then I have goals for analyzing that ad or commercial. So think about it. I love these. These four are some of the greatest ads. Those of you who teach middle school or high school ELA, you've probably seen and use these to teach kids how to analyze. Um, but these particular commercials are really good at getting you into the analytical mindset. So I would either use these or I would choose a visual advertisement. Like, I like this one from Febreze. That one's very cool. Bad odor makes eighty makes it 84% harder to remember our memories. <laughs> I love that. Or this one. Oh, that's, that's Band-Aid. I love that too. I mean, even the Hulk needs a Band-Aid, right? Or this one. We need to build each other up. Poverty Awareness Month. This is just something someone made on Canva. Just that picture speaks thousands of words, right? So some of you are going to resonate with a commercial that runs for three to you know four minutes, whatever. Some of you are going to resonate with just a visual ad. So what you want to do is you want to pick one of those, and then you want to try to answer these questions. Go ahead, get your phone, snap a photo. So you have this. Um, you want to try to answer these questions toward goal number one. Do you notice how... Even in this activity, I've put goals in it because from the assessor standpoint, 
they're going to want to see that you are teaching and you are unpacking, providing insight toward goals, that you're not just doing something and just unpacking whatever you did. There's a purpose behind it. And the kids are working toward a verb in this goal and content toward this goal that is very important to them at that time. So very important to you right now when you watch one of these commercials is you need to examine how the commercial tries to get your attention. And the way you're going to do that, examine will be around analysis, that's analytical, is to be able to answer these four questions. So you're noticing too, there's a lot of hows and whys from these questions. Goal number two is, I want you to be able to determine what sort of mood this advertisement seeks to create in you, okay? So how is it shaping you? So again, what are you doing here? You're taking a commercial that you would have just looked at and just been like, oh, that was Hulk with a Band-Aid on. I, I, that just reminds me of, of you know, Band-Aids and that everybody needs a Band-Aid. Well, is that truly very deeply analytical? No. So how does the commercial or advertisement shape the way you feel about Band-Aids now that you've seen that commercial? Deeply think about that. What is in your mind? What is this commercial doing or ad doing for you? And so again, what's the point of this activity? The point of this activity is to see how well you can even get into analytical voice and thinking without the national board, you know, outside of national board. <laughs> how can you do that? If you're not really good at it with this activity, you need to practice, just practice being that way. So then it just becomes reflect, like a reflexual, reflexive, reflexive type thing that you're doing, okay? And then goal number three would be that I would want you to listen if there's a soundtrack. If there's not, you wouldn't have two goals. Listen to the soundtrack of the commercial and ask how it affects your reaction. Okay, so you could have two goals. You could have three. The important thing is that you are trying to see how deeply you can get into analytical voice. I love to meditate. That's something that it just brings a lot of power to me. But I remember when I first started trying to meditate, I could not meditate. I was like, how do people do this? I, I'm, I was thinking uh, I need to go spend some time with monks in a monastery so I can just learn to like meditate and pray. Um, but then once I got the hang of it and I practiced it slowly, but surely I got it. So you, you just need to say to yourself, give myself grace. Where am I really good? Where am I not so good? Am I good at answering how questions, why questions not? What, what can I do better? Um, ask somebody else to look at the commercial and ask them those same questions. And then you'll start learning from them as well. Um, and kids, are great at this, especially teenagers, their point of view is amazing around things that are analytical. And it's very different than ours, especially for somebody like me that's 50 something. So, um, it, you know, ask others to help you too. So that's an exercise you can do if you want to, you don't have to, but if you want to do that. The other things I want to tell you is that um, it, we need to remember this idea of analysis versus identification. So I think that teachers often do like a really good job in their written commentary of identifying facts to analyze, such as the teacher in the beginning of this PowerPoint that gave us facts, right? But they fall short of generating that complete analysis that happened by the third slide. That complete analysis that's going to draw um, a persuasive conclusion of those facts for your reader, and in this case, your assessor. So just beware. If I can um, really get you to beware of anything, beware of just identifying evidence and not analyzing what it means to you. So number one, I want you to dig into the reasons why your evidence proves your students have met the goals of the lesson and you have met the bullets on the rubric. Dig into the reasons why. Where is the evidence? How can you prove it? You're like a lawyer in the courtroom having to argue this evidence, essentially. That's your thinking. You should point out your reasons for reaching a conclusion. 
And that may feel obvious to you. You may be like, oh my gosh, I mean, they should know this. But they can't just know this. There's no inferencing. The national board score isn't subjective. It's a, you, They are going to find evidence or not find evidence. It is a step that shows how, how, remember, how and why is super important here in the analysis. All of your evidence is relating and it reveals what you know and what you believe. So that it's, I cannot even reiterated enough for you. Beware of just identifying evidence and not analyzing. So finally, mastery. True masters of analytical thinking and writing must do these things. You must effectively gather information to analyze, which you've done. You all have evidence. All of you have your videos. All of you have your, your evidence to look at. So that's effectively gathered. Number two, Know how to focus on facts that relate to the goals and separate the facts that do not relate to the goals. Separate those facts, or I should say, or the rubric, bullet points, because you're providing evidence and analysis toward the goals and making sure that you're connecting to the rubric bullet points. And when, let me give you an example of that. Um, something that wouldn't be goals but would be rubric would be provides a safe, fair, equitable learning environment, right? That's not going to go with your goals in a content lesson, but that goes to the rubric and you need to provide evidence and analyze how and why that that is um, important toward that particular rubric bullet point, okay? And you don't need to number the bullet point and write out the whole bullet point and all that. You don't need to do all that. This is just a really natural flow of you talking about answering the question on safe, fair, equitable environment where you get into the analysis part of this. You think about how you answered those questions for the commercials and you got very deeply into the commercials. You could, with safe, fair, and equitable environment, say, you know, all of my kids had flexible seating and they were able to choose where they worked. So that was choice and they feel comfortable talking to each other. Do you see how that's just identifying facts versus the deepness of why? How is that flexible seating creating safety? How, why is choice really creating this wonderful classroom community environment? That's what I'm saying about analysis. Number three, examine information and use logical thinking to form valid conclusions toward the goals of the lesson. One more time, I'm going to tell you, teachers often just write the facts. They don't examine. Examining these ads is going to let you see how doctors examine deeply beyond your sore throat. They don't just say she has a sore throat, she gets augmenting. Uh-uh. They examine beyond that, and you're examining your evidence beyond that. Identify patterns and use trends to form predictions. Oftentimes, candidates will say, I don't even understand what that means. <laughs> you need to understand what that means. So patterns and trends are super important for understanding data and understanding what's going on. And then take ideas in the evidence part, take ideas in the evidence apart. Remember, unpack. And then we're going to link them. Remember, the word is restructure to the demands of the rubric. So you're going to unpack what's going on in your evidence and you're going to restructure it to give the assessor, let me come back at you, insight. They want insight. That's what they want. They want that. I hope this helped you. Um, you guys are doing great. Keep growing big. And remember, keep saying to yourself, I am an NBCT. You are. You are an NBCT. I'm praying for you. And I hope that you continue to think this process is joyful because you have never grown so big. Bye now.